Sourcing a document is what we're going to be taking a look at here. And you can see that there's an acronym next to it. It says HAP. Now, when we say sourcing a document, we're actually referring to the second target skill of the course, formally referred to as sourcing and situation. Now, here's the exact wording of the skill. Analyze sourcing and situation of primary and secondary sources. Primary being directly from the time period, secondary meaning it was compiled later. To simplify, what we do is use the acronym HAP. Whenever you see HAP, this is what it stands for. Historical situation, audience, purpose, point of view. These are four things to consider whenever you're looking at a primary or secondary source. Now keep in mind that there will be times where we look at all of these for a document, and there may be times when we just look at one or two, but we use HAP. And when you HAP, like I might just use HAP like it's a verb at times, when you HAP a document, it's not necessarily just enough to say, this is the purpose. You must connect that purpose. You need to connect that intended audience to your thesis. And there needs to be relevancy. It has to be relevant to the argument you're making. Now, in terms of how to approach this formally, you know, historical situation. Whenever you see a document, there's probably going to be a time frame that's listed. So what's the period of the source? How does this affect the message? And what are some of the bigger historical themes that are going on here? It's kind of like contextualizing the source. That's the best way to think of historical situation. Audience. Who was this source created for? And how does this affect the bias of the author? Make no mistake, every source has a bias. It's just a matter of determining how that bias maybe affects the actual message. So who made the source? Who was it created for? How does it affect the bias of the author? Why was the source produced? So what's the purpose of it? Why was it made? Why was it spoken? Why was it created? How does this affect the message? And then finally, point of view. And there's a lot of different categories here, but you have to consider how the perspective of the author affects their bias. So you see this word bias come up on two separate occasions. We're going to look at two examples to figure out how to approach it. The first is a written example. Whenever you are sourcing a document, start by looking at the top and bottom because that's normally where you're going to find information about the source itself. So this is from a book by a scholar named Charles Mann. His book was called 1491, New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus, and it was published in 2005. So what's the historical situation here? Well, New Revelations, 2005, this is definitely secondary. So we're re-examining the civilizations that existed in the Western Hemisphere prior to the arrival of Europeans. That's the historical situation of this particular passage. Now the audience, well, Charles Mann, is a scholar who writes in the English language, so that's who it's intended for. This is not just a, this is not a scholarly article. This was a published book, so he's probably trying to reach a larger audience here. Purpose. Inform readers about what was going on prior to contact with Europeans. Again, 1491, New Revelations of America Before Columbus makes that clear. And what's the point of view? Well, man is a journalist. He is scholarly, but he's publishing something for a wider audience. So that's a more written example. Visually, we're taking a look at a map. Now again, you look top, you look bottom. In this case, spread of the Black Death in Europe. The years are given. So what's the historical situation? Well, the Black Death is ravaging Afro-Eurasia. Who's the audience? Well, this wasn't created during the time frame. You know, when you see a map like this, it's more for people looking back at what had happened. And the purpose, it appears, is yes, to figure out how the Black Death spread, where and when did it spread. That's what the dates refer to. 
but you also see land trade routes, maritime routes, border between the Principality of Kiev and the Golden Horde, passage prohibited for Christians. So we have a bit of Mongol history in here if we're talking about the Golden Horde. We also see a bit of a discrepancy. 1347, 1348, but then a few years pass between the spread of the Black Death from this to this, from this border to this border. All right, so purpose could be to draw conclusions about how it spread with the different trade routes and with this border and where it spread. Point of view. We don't know who created it, so it's kind of tough to go off of it. But these are all things you keep in mind when you not only examine maps as we have just done, but when you source any document. Always remember to hack.